This is the... Uh, this is the dream rod, an essential item solidifying star allies identity and redeeming quality of the game. Buff DDD and maybe dream friends. Playable all stars from the past substitute as the backbone of the experience and make up for any lack of accomplishment the base is unfortunately provided. Controlling the king of dreamland, meta knight or head goomba might not be too thrilling anymore but getting the chance to play as Taransa, Adeline or fully fledged boss characters such as the Roach or Marx is something you rarely receive from a series. On top of that, it's not like there's only one or two special newcomers like in former entries, but nearly every essential character you have seen so far. It goes without saying that this Smash Bros. like gathering is without a doubt ambitious to no end and something players can usually only dream of. I mean, imagine controlling every Zelda character, that would be so... <laughs> Imagine my ass. The item responsible for Star Allies' conceivable redeeming feature is the Dream Rod, obtainable just after two levels in the Dream Palace, a separate area on the world map, and approachable in every world. By touching one of those staffs, Kirby can summon a frenemy from the past, the aforementioned Dream Friends. Still, as outstanding as this milestone might be, it also shows a certain lack of acknowledgement of what the creators actually wanted to achieve. Obviously, this goes into speculation and it's impossible to know what was and was not planned, but going by the course of action and the existence of a distinct spin-off not capitalizing on Star Allies' greatest strength, despite feeling like a poster child to do so, it's interesting to examine how this item redeemed Star Allies, and why simultaneously the Dream Friends are potentially a huge waste of ambition so far. First of all, let's pin down the brilliance of those partners, why they work so amazingly and how they actually saved the game. To get a picture, of their importance. The main feature of Star Allies are playable companions in the form of the most iconic enemies in the franchise. Superstar already presented such an idea but was limited to only one partner instead of a whole squad of three. Additionally, there are a couple of more elaborated, complex and stronger allies, the mentioned Dream Friends, main characters with a more in-depth background, a couple of them returning as partners, others former antagonists and playable for the first time. Their moves that can be quite tricky to learn, having all sorts of small gimmicks, especially the ones with elemental attributes. Take Susie, for example, able to summon a robot armor suit on top of her basic arsenal of attacks. Furthermore, she can combine her weapons with elemental effects, giving her toolkit even more depth. It's not like with a regular partner, which functions fundamentally the same as Kirby's copy ability, but fully elaborated, unique movesets instead. Some of them go the extra mile and combine multiple characters, which makes thematically sense like the animal bodies from Dreamland 2. Dedicating each partner to their respective speciality allows an incredibly flexible moveset, covering every essential elemental style you'll need and turning seemingly uneventful figures in the franchise to one of the most intriguing ones. Oh. Naturally, some Dream Friends are based on existing skills, like Taranza being heavily reminiscent of the Spider ability, Dark Meta Knight feeling like a Meta Knight clone, and Adeline sharing similarities with Paint. Even so, they differ from their blueprint and feel more like expanded culminations of existing skills. When Dark Meta Knight was announced to join the band of playable characters, everyone expected a near one-to-one -one image of Meta Knight. But what we got instead is a combination of Sword and Mirror, with the latter not obtainable in Star allies. Thanks to this sudden realization of unexpected ambition even towards presumably uneventful enemies in the franchise, Dark Meta Knight became one of my favorite companions to play as, cementing the fact no dream friend is treated apathetic. The same goes for Taranza or Adeline, both fully evolving a fundamental set in this game. What makes these cases even greater is how those partners are not the norm. Most of the dream friends are completely original, some of them borrowing obvious inspirations from past playable appearances, but it's incredible how they make you feel like playable boss characters with all those options available. One stellar instance is Star Roach with his first proper entrance as a three-dimensional model in the main series. I love how they were like we have to make a 3D model for him but he's only shown his hands. Floating limbs it is. There are a bunch of tricks fitting to his character but summoning every main bandit from the squeak squad plus a fake treasure box containing dark nebula reminds me I have a heart. Willing to create multiple fresh models for only one attack 
per character to care to attention. Not every developer is willing to do, especially in consideration, assuming many players would not return after months of the initial release. Makes you really wonder if the lackluster main campaign is a result of an easy cash grab or some kind of pressure from above the creators had to deal with. Whatever the case is, just like with every Kirby game, Star Allies primary features excellently executed and further amplified with each additional update the game received. Even the marketing was clearly inspired by Smash, with focused character trailers showing off their movesets, sometimes featuring cleverly implemented hints to lore snippets. Can someone finally give this man a hug? However, these characters were not playable since the beginning. When the game released, most of the Dream Friends still had to be implemented, as Star Allies felt fairly rushed and needed to be updated with additional content, something we have never seen to such an extent in the series before. At its release, the only available Dream Friend from the beginning was Head Goomba, followed by DDD and Meta Knight after their defeat. Certainly not bad characters, but past the point of being exciting without a doubt. Today the circumstances are a little different with a handful characters unlocked since the very start and the rest following as you progress. While this practice of finishing a title later can be questioned, there was still the excitement of what bonus characters will return, despite the fact almost all of them were data mined. Trying to breath life into the game again is a noble cause but followed with two essential problems, bringing people back in the first place and the way you unlock them. By the time Star Allies was completed, many players did not want to go through it again, since the basic adventure stood the same and you are only controlling a different character. Additionally, you cannot play as most of them until you beat the main campaign and even if you unlock some of them, you can only write them as Kirby, which works theoretically but feels a little unsatisfying after all. Yes, Star Allies true merits show after beating the short campaign and it's detrimental to think the story mode is actually the focal point, but for the general public you cannot expect them to look under the surface. As cocky as this may sound. What's even worse is how the Dream Friends rely extremely on nostalgia. Fans will appreciate the attention to detail in every single move and I can once again assure you, the care for each Dream Friend and how they are portrayed is purely outstanding. Not to speak of post screen descriptions for each friend, further outlining their motivations, despite some unfortunate translation errors Star Allies is used to at this point. Still, there is no benefit in feeling so overpowered in a game made for people who have even more difficulties than beginners or toddlers. What kind of people are worse in games than beginners, IGN? Mothers? Indeed, you can obliterate most bosses in a snap and it does feel satisfying to be so unbelievably mighty, but it's not going to change your opinion substantially. The only moment where I felt truly challenged and had to make use of every trick there is to a dream friend was during the ultimate choice, fighting all those difficult bosses in a row. To be honest, it was still quite feasible, but despite the fact how fine-tuned the gameplay of modern two-dimensional Kirby seems to be, those battles with different figures proved how there's always room to improve, and how much I wish to control those characters again. Now, you may wonder what I mean by puzzles, since the level design is seemingly not built around characters that were added at a later point. What people are aware of, however, is the helper to hero mode, where you play as one of the many partners with slight changes to the main adventure. Boosting your stats like speed or attack create the feeling of becoming stronger. Tedious parts are cut from a run through and there are even completely new sections, often in the form of underused friend power gimmicks. And here comes a point many players do not know about since it was not clearly advertised. Every newly added dream friend has a heavily altered campaign with level segments being completely redone and designed around the moveset of the respective dream friend. Often it's a complete homage to one of the past games and it's expressively impressive how the creators managed it to rebuild certain levels with the tools of Star Allies. Simulating Kirby's super abilities with Margolos giant sword and some bomb blocks makes me feel like I'm playing exceptionally clever Mario Maker level, using the game's assets to mimic something which is not programmed. And this is just one instance. The lacking level design of Star Allies is one of the main negative aspects of the game, as I elaborated in a video before, but those altered Dream Friend campaigns are on par with the level design of a triple deluxe or Planet Robobot. <laughs> nice 3D effect. And it's really a shame many players do not know about them. What they should be aware of, however, is heroes from another dimension. The final mode and last surprise to a men's Star Allies Rocky introduction. By focusing specific copy abilities and dream friends on concretely crafted level sections, you get one of the most particularly designed courses in the franchise. If you have watched any of my videos, you might know about my stance of copy abilities being frequently withdrawn to optional puzzle rooms, which can offer some interesting concepts, but are just just as simplistic as the 
base game. Consequently, copy abilities can be lost at any point and the creators can never assume the player will have a skill in his inventory to use. This is not the case here, luckily, and some of those puzzles may be just as easy to solve but are all the more satisfying to perform. Similarly, the same can be applied to Dream Friends, providing them yet again with another reason to exist beyond a packed character selection screen. Wait a minute. Yes, the atmosphere is all the same until the end, but not as monotonous when playing through. After all, you're looking forward to even harder counterparts of existing bosses, some of them appearing like a fan-made mod. You should stop eating that, DDD. And ironically, these are some of the most difficult opponents in the franchise on your first try, adding to the fact they were shaped with dream friends in mind. At the end of your adventure awaits a completely new rendition of known foes, gifting the ultimate prize of becoming the very last dream friend, the magical sister introduced in Star Allies itself. Heroes from another dimension was already more than enough of an unexpected benefaction, but the Magical Sisters are perfect to conclude the game. Of course they have their own campaign as well, functioning as a presentation of their remarkably complex moveset, a result of having to impress without any nostalgia other dream friends can pull from. As the name suggests, you can actually control three characters but can switch between them Smash Bros style, each of them having unique traits while playing fundamentally similar. The blue one uses her water cannon, the red one can bounce around and the yellow one is noticeably quick on her. That was rude, sorry. It goes without saying how game-breaking the sisters are and it's a right on its own to breeze through something that is supposed to be the hardest challenge in any Kirby game. The main question of this video and something that always confused me is... Why? Why putting so much effort into an apparent one-timer when there's so much potential for all these characters? Looking at the past, the developers always reused playable appearances once they were done, with Meta Knight being a perfect example since the GBA days. It's true, there are smaller exceptions like Margolor, whose playable build was utilized for the remake of Return to Dreamland Deluxe, but so far, there are no signs of fully embracing all these characters in the future since it seems like the future of the series lies in 3D gameplay. It may be strange to assume creators implement a feature for the sake of planning to recycle it soon again, but this happens more often than you think and everyone will agree it would be a waste to never play as Daroge, Susie or Adeline again. The only time where such a chance was absolutely obvious, but absolutely wasted, was Kirby Fighters 2, the small eShop only release. Looking at the roster of playable fighters, it's quite expanded in comparison to the first title, having Kirby as the sole fighter, but disappointing in regard to star allies. Margulor and Gooey are the only returning units unique dream friends with DDD, Meta Knight and Hand Goomba feeling a little standard at this point. This was the ultimate chance to bring back all those dream friends in a setting, lacking in star allies with a heavy reliance on combat and action. Naturally it would have been noticeably harder to balance all these characters on top of Kirby's copy abilities, but I would like to imagine the balancing was not very high on Fighters 2's priority list with moves like this. Yes there is a dedicated competitive fan base, but it should have been no problem to tweak most dream friends in a adjust their movesets to fit a fighting game. Playable challenges are not the only way to improve Fighters 2 core experience, however. The newly added campaign expects you to win multiple battles in a row, granting some skill enhancing items in between and make it to the top of a tower without losing. Relatively plain boss fights mix things up, but they are not enough to reach the intended effect. When aiming for 100%, you're going to beat the mode with every single ability and character, making each run incredibly repetitive despite the core enjoying nature of a roguelike mode. Yes, normal battles are slightly changed, but after some while and training, they all turn into a mishmash, equal in difficulty and boring in execution. One simple solution would have been dream friends as boss characters, appearing randomly in each playthrough and especially because there are too many for one run through to come up, there's no chance to see which of them will occur. To clarify something, I'm not talking about dream friends appearing as a regular fighter and disguising them as boss opponents. What I am talking about are adjusted boss fights using the moveset of the dream friends but simply changing them faintly to create the illusion of a boss. Ironically Star Allies already introduced this very idea by including Marx as an enemy in one of the credits giving you a chance to gather some extra points. His height is only vaguely changed and they added some extra moves, but it's basically the dream friend model and going by how they included this small battle in the credits, it was probably no difficult task to implement. Maybe there was the plan to implement more of them, add them as bonus content just like in Star Allies or other 
other plans. But so far, Star Allies Dream Friends are sort of a waste of ambition on a game many people are not willing to give another try. But still luckily saved Star Allies from being a generic Kirby adventure to a love letter to fans. Let's take a look into the future though and see if there is any potential chance for another opportunity. As I already mentioned, Margolo was reused in Return to Dreamlands remake, which released a couple years later than Star Allies. This remake was probably not fully planned back in 2018, so maybe all these dream friends serve as a safety net for given chances. I'm not expecting every single one of them having a greater plan to return, but I do believe the developers created some of them with the purpose of having at least the option at any point to recycle them again. Imagine potential triple deluxe or planet robot remakes and implementing a playable Taranza or Susie would bring next to no extra work with it. The same goes for an amazing mirror or Squeak Squad remake or just look at Kirby 64 and its beta pictures. The game already features a playable DDD in certain sections and with Adeline being a dream friend and just altering head Goomba to the standard one of Kirby 64, bringing this beta feature back would be a no-brainer. In many instances, games are done with either cautious long-term goals in mind or leaving possibilities open. And I wish to see this point become plainly relevant one day in hindsight.